matter what, for desire backed by faith knows no such thing as impossible. Hi, this is your host Arjun. I'm a functional medicine health professional and personal trainer, and I'm here to motivate and empower you with knowledge that will help you to regenerate your health and align with your higher vision. Welcome to the part 2 of Managing the Master Mineral Magnesium. If you haven't listened to the previous episode, I'd encourage you to listen to it as well. I had mentioned that there would be two parts, but it so happens that the information that I'd like to share with you all is more than I had expected it to be. So I have created a third part, which I have already published with this episode. My effort is always to keep the episodes under 15 minutes, at least the ones that are dense with information, since I understand that it might be inconvenient to have a lot of information and long podcast episodes. So in this episode, the part two of managing the master mineral magnesium, I'll be only and only be talking about how to avoid magnesium depletion and the remaining topics magnesium rich foods, different forms of magnesium and understanding RBC, serum and urinary magnesium levels. You'll find these in episode number three, which has already been published. I'm sorry for doing this, but I really wanted to address the topic of magnesium depletion thoroughly. After all, functional medicine is about addressing the root cause and It makes no sense in supplementing or trying to meet the nutrient requirements of the body if the factors that have actually caused the deficiency are not addressed. No matter what you do, you'll find yourself back to where you started. So I want you to not just become healthy, but stay healthy. Let's begin. The first step in managing magnesium levels, or actually anything I'd say, specifically in regards with well managing your health is to first eliminate the factors that are actually causing the problem in the first place rather than jumping onto managing its outcome. Basically the problem or symptoms itself. For sure, managing the outcome is a good temporary fix that will arrest the progression of the problem or symptoms and slow it down, but that won't really cause it to stop. And that's how functional medicine actually works. With that, let's get started with the factors that are actually causing the deficiency in the first place. First and foremost, due to modern agricultural practices, we are facing a problem of topsoil erosion globally. What that means is, soil is where minerals are present, which is absorbed by the plants and trees. And with the problem of topsoil erosion, that is faced today along with heavy use of chemicals and pesticides, there is a major depletion of magnesium and other minerals in our foods. And I really wouldn't say that there's nothing we can do about it. Actually, there are a few things that we can do that'll help. Remember, at the end of the day, an ocean is made up of drops of water. So don't underestimate your role in the society, in this world. You matter and you are important. First of all, I'd encourage you to look up regenerative farming. There's also a nice documentary that I watched, Kiss the Ground. I'd encourage you to watch it if and when you have the time and spread the word. I'll be posting the link to the documentary in the show notes. Secondly, buy local and organic, preferably from a farmer's market if there's one near you. Pesticide laden, genetically engineered veggies and fruits that are big and shiny, perfect looking, doesn't mean anything. They aren't high in nutrients. They probably even, they might be even lower. So you've got to opt for the local organically grown fruits and veggies, which are low in pesticides and even way smaller than the conventional ones, but packed with the same or even somewhat higher amounts of nutrients. 
Best of all, if you have the time and resources, you can grow your own food in the backyard. Some of my friends do that and the tomatoes, cucumbers and some other vegetables and fruits that I got from them were seriously out of the world. Delicious, naturally sweet and flavorful. And lastly, method of cooking. It's better to steam or go for light sauteing in place of grilling or boiling wherein you lose most of the nutrients and, def and, and definitely don't fry. Next, sugar. And I'm not talking about natural sugars from fruits. I'm talking about the processed and refined ones along with high intake of refined carbohydrates like for example bakes and breads made up of refined wheat flour. When you consume these or products that have them, the body has to go through a number of processes which require magnesium as well in order to break them down into energy and in the absence of any magnesium in the foods and sugars, the body is going to tap into its own reserves. And if you are already depleted, talk about low bone density. So please, I'd encourage you to dial down on your processed sugar intake. I understand that it's not something you might be able to do overnight, but I request you to start gradually reducing its intake. A good place to start would be by replacing store-bought pre-made packaged products with homemade foods and fruits. And for the teas and coffees, you can start by re replacing the refined sugars with a teaspoon or two of coconut sugar or molasses or mong fruit, something on those lines but in moderation. Speaking of coffee, it's a diuretic along with teas and other caffeinated beverages. I suggest limiting your caffeine intake to 100 to 120 grams in a day since it's the caffeine that causes you to lose magnesium. Then, chronic use of medications also cause magnesium depletion like high blood pressure drugs, diuretic, blood con uh, birth control pills, antacids, some antibiotics, anti-seizure and anti-depression medications, etc. I'd recommend that you speak with your doctor and perhaps get onto magnesium supplementation. Also, please limit alcohol consumption, which is also a contributing factor. There is something interesting I'd like to share with you since we are speaking about blood pressure medications. The medication actually lowers the magnesium level in the body as one of the side effects. And without magnesium, the muscles won't be able to maintain proper muscle tension. I mean the muscles of the heart and blood vessels in this case. We have already discussed effects of low magnesium on the heart in the previous episode. So in the case of blood vessels, it won't be able to dilate and contract efficiently. They'll be stuck in the spasmodic condition, increasing the pressure on the walls of the arteries and that's what elevations in blood pressure mean. Many a times the cause of hypertension is nothing but a magnesium deficiency. So, what can I say? We live in a crazy, crazy world. Okay, moving on, there's chronic stress, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, and environmental factors that can deplete magnesium further by activating the sympathetic nervous system. Imagine when acute stress causes plasma and urinary magnesium to increase, basically it's excretion from the body, what chronic stress could do and stress is associated with increased oxidative stress which again depletes magnesium. There's a really interesting research article that I have linked to over here in the transcript and in the case of type 2 diabetes hyperglycemia since the body is already facing an increase in stress then things like running, exercising, profound sweating will only further contribute to depletion of magnesium. So, it'll be ideal to be more active by taking walks perhaps more often, maybe spread throughout the day. And if you wish, you can get into Tai Chi. Maybe some light swimming, yoga, stretching if you wish. A side note that 
Stretching should only be done when the body is warm after performing some activity. And of course, you have to try and reduce your stress levels while also well managing metabolic syndrome. And another weird thing that I'd like to mention before I go ahead, in type 2 diabetes, there is a magnesium deficiency taking place because not only is magnesium being depleted due to excretion through urine and due to increased inflammation and oxidation, but also due to the fact that insulin stimulates magnesium uptake in insulin sensitive tissues and insulin insensitivity will prevent the magnesium from getting into the cell. And not only that, low intracellular magnesium basically low magnesium in the cell also further promotes insulin resistance plus guess what diabetic medications diabetes medications like metformin does lower magnesium so it's best to speak with your doctor and get on to magnesium supplementation at least till the time you're on medications and working on managing your type 2 diabetes successfully Overdosing on vitamin D also causes depletion of magnesium since it requires magnesium for its activation. So remember not to start supplementing with vitamin D aggressively. That too not without supplementing with magnesium first at least a week before you start taking vitamin D. As for managing with vitamin D, I'll be making an episode on that as well in, in the coming weeks. High dosages of calcium and phosphorus will also most likely lead to an imbalance contributing to magnesium deficiency. And another side note, you need sufficient levels of vitamin D, B6 and selenium for the absorption of magnesium. So make sure that all the nutrients are in place. Lastly, but most importantly, your gut health matters a whole lot. In the presence of conditions such as celiac disease, gastritis, basically inflammation in the gut, ulcerative colitis, etc., magnesium absorption is bound to suffer. Just like if the doors of the train are dysfunctional, how many people do you suppose would be able to get into the train? Not many, of course. Our gut lining has to be healthy for any nutrient absorption to appropriately take place, not just magnesium. And so does our stomach acid need to be sufficient. Because stomach acid is needed to absorb important nutrients apart from magnesium, like iron, B12, calcium and zinc. Without the proper breakdown or absorption of nutrients, we end up obtaining less nutrition from the foods already. Plus imagine if the intestinal lining is also not healthy. That's a double whammy right there. So a healthy cut is very, very important. I would also like to mention about PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, which are commonly described for, prescribed, I'm sorry, for treatment of peptic ulcer gastritis esophagitis and gastroesophageal reflux cause a rapid depletion of magnesium as a side effect when used chronically, especially since it also suppresses stomach acid. And with that, we have reached the end of this episode. Part 3 is ready and published, so feel free to listen to it now or later or tomorrow or whenever you'd like. I thank you all for being such loyal listeners. Have a nice day or evening. See you in part 3. If you'd like to keep in touch, subscribe to the newsletter. For more personalized support, you can start by scheduling a free call with me. If you find what I do helpful, you can support the show by becoming a patron. All links can be found below in the show notes. Until next time, stay healthy. Stay happy.